Welcome everyone. In today's guide, I will go through the Chopin Opus 22, which is both the Andante Spionato and the Grand Polonaise Brilliant. So I have played this piece, um, you can see a YouTube video of mine, which I've uploaded. And today I will go through all the details of both the Andante Spionato and the Grand Polonaise. I will show you some tips and tricks, some ideas that I have and how you can um, practice and what you should take care of. So this is going to be quite a lengthy guide. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. So we will start with the Andante Spionato and actually we will start with the edition. As you have seen, I'm using the Ekier edition and this is the recommended edition. It's called the National Edition. You can use also different editions. For example, I have the Henley edition over here, which I started with until the Ekier edition arrived for me because there were some shipping delays. So you can really choose between uh, both. Also the Podorewski will have one, but the recommended edition is the Ekier, especially if you want to perform it, let's say in a competition or so. So we start with the Andante Spionato and we start with a sempre legato and pianissimo. And the way I do this, even though we have this legato, uh, you don't have to be completely connected between five to one and three, because otherwise it might be a bit awkward for you. So what I recommend is by using the pedal, a bit of disconnect between the two now of course legato and everything yes but the position allows us to have a little bit of a space in here because otherwise I mean you can do like this but it's really quite awkward and if you look at um, a lot of recordings and how other people play it there will be a bit of a disconnect here due to the position so we can manage this with the pedal However, what we need to do for the first four bars, because we have only the left hand, is we need to have a bit of a phrasing here. So what I quite like to do is to do a bit crescendo and then come down again. And then the right hand starts. So important here is you want to bring out the bass, but you don't want to bring it out the same way four times. Otherwise, really, it's not that interesting. So have an idea of what you do. Maybe a little bit uh, crescendo towards the middle. And then more the bass one time and more the upper voices one time. So that you have a bit of a development, let's say. Of course, this should not be exaggerated. And this should be just the beginning of the piece so you don't have to put a hundred ideas in this left hand just saying that you want to have a little bit very microscopic development in what you do in the left hand before we start in the right hand so the right hand now of course uh, beginning with the melody i always recommend don't be too afraid with the melody otherwise it's not you know, it doesn't convey. So I quite like to do a little bit more with the melody always. Like this, I, I quite like to go a bit over the top with the melody here, especially if you're playing in a bigger hall, you know, it you will have trouble if you're just uh, playing for yourself this might work in a smaller room like here for example but you really need to project your melody and the right hand here otherwise you're gonna struggle when you play in a, in a bigger size room so i always tend to go more on the offense in in this case for strategic purposes basically so now we look at the phrasing here. I quite like to do, for example, in bar nine, if I just play from bar eight. A bit of a surprise resolution here. You can work with this, work with harmonic resolutions and try to bring them out nicely. You don't want to steamroll anything, you know? You want to bring out some, some novelties or some changes out nicely. I will show again here. Like 
this is an idea, you know, and you want to phrase the whole thing uh, from bar five to bar eight in one big phrase. So you don't want, want to have very uh, small phrases. Okay, then in bar 11, I quite like to pronounce these a bit more. So some people just play through them, but I quite like to a little bit more pronounce. And I think it helps the, the character of the piece basically. But like this I would do. So if we look now in bar 13, we have the same theme appear again. So what we can do is either you do less than the first time or what I do is I do more and I use the left hand as my volume. So volume in the sense of many notes creates a more dense structure. So I would, for example, do a bit more left hand here. necessarily have to play the right hand that much louder but you have this more volume happening in the left hand which helps you to get a different color than the first time so the first time you might have a lot of separation for example bar five between the left and right and the second time uh, <clears throat> sorry the second time bar 13 you can have less separation or more combined dynamic this is just an idea you can also just go you can go the opposite way yeah you can completely go the opposite way the second time this is up to you um, yeah I quite like to do this in bar 17 already in Leggero I think it's quite elegant and then we have a dolcissimo in bar 19 So whatever color you chose before needs to be in a contrast with this, in my opinion. So dolcissimo would be nice that it's a completely new color. Completely new color and, um, and also dynamic. I use the bass starting from bar 20 to lead into a little bit of a crescendo here in 21. So... So I quite like to be in this dynamic here for the whole thing. And then I bring it down with a subito. So I like to do like this. crescendo very long crescendo until and then here you even have another crescendo in bar 32 and 33 which means you have to crescendo all the way until you arrive at a brilliant for me it's quite uh, I like the brilliant sound here and then come back uh, quite quickly actually with your dynamics so... and everything in one pedal and then change here so everything this is going to be in one pedal the way that you don't get uh, so much dirt is by using bass notes and then a very bright uh, right hand change the pedal there so you don't want to have uh, too much of this left hand too much of this left hand will create too much chaos so separate bass left hand and then bright right hand you will have a good sound for the pedal okay then the whole thing repeats obviously and we can be a bit more delicato for example about 41 delicatissimo and the whole thing basically repeats and um, there isn't uh, much new of course he adds ornaments and so 
but the same structure is um, is kept until we arrive at somewhere around 50 <laughs> escalation which we need to do with the accelerando and with the crescendo as well but basically you want to have four five or five four for this section so you can choose this is the way I did it so basically I do four five you can also do five four if you're more of a fan of this, there is both of these options. But the important thing is that the accelerando and the crescendo goes quite direct into the forte. Like this. In bar 26, I use 2 4. Always with a bit of direction. I will show you my finger like a galop. That's a very visual image.